By some industry estimates, the so-called retirement savings gap, which represents the difference between what people saving for retirement think they need and how much they've actually saved, now runs in the trillions of dollars in the U.S. This comes despite indications that retirement savings rates keep inching higher each year. A variety of economic and personal savings trends are credited by many retirement advisors as impacting personal savings rates of workers, both those early in the professional careers as well as those fast approaching their retirements. To discuss what individual savers might be able to do, or at least what they're they should be aiming to do, we've tapped into the knowledge of one experienced industry veteran, Shireen Bulky. She is IFA's Director of Retirement Services and has more than three decades of experience working with large corporate record keepers and advisors on 401k related retirement savings plans. Hi, Shireen. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Murray. Thanks for having me join you. You betcha. What are some of the major education gaps you see that retirement plan participants might want to avoid? Well, there's a number of things that that participants uh, can do to avoid education gaps with respect to their retirement plan. Uh, One important document is the summary plan description. So I, I recommend that participants get that document and read it so that they understand their plan provisions. The summary plan description is given to all new hires, and then if there's been a lot of amendments over time, they'll get a revision, a a revised SPD later. I also think that reading the fee disclosures that are provided upon hire and then annually thereafter, um, those are important so that the participant can understand what fees they're paying and what fees the plan sponsor is paying. And SPDs, just to be uh, clear, those are very short and concise? Yes, they're really um, uh, uh, formulated to for for the layman. So they're so they're understanding, um, you know, the basic plan provisions. That's not like the the plan document, which is difficult to read, and, and there's a lot of legalese in there. The SPDs are designed for plan participants. Okay, and then along those same lines. Um, advisors and record keepers typically have employee education sessions that they can attend, correct? Yes. And those are important too. I I think it's really awesome that they're provided and participants should take advantage of them because they're not always mandatory. Sometimes they're put out there, you might get an invitation, but people aren't necessarily attending. I like it if the plan sponsor can make those mandatory, but those uh, employee presentations are often provided by uh, both the uh, record keeper and the and the advisor. If it's investment related, it's off, oftentimes the advisor that's providing those. Okay. And also uh, there are participant websites, correct? Yes. Information? Okay. Yes. And it's important that the participant log on to their website occasionally with their username and password because there's a lot of videos and education materials um, they are available to them, and also they can see, check their statements. Okay. And also, I know you're a big proponent of working with your advisor to examine outside assets and uh, other accounts, uh, correct? Correct, correct. Sometimes we forget when we change employers that we might have left a retirement plan back there. And um, sometimes employees just don't remember where, where all their assets are. So we, we recommend that the employees work with their advisor to examine those prior assets, uh, those prior plan documents, and those prior um, accounts so that they can determine if it makes some sense to consolidate those assets. So you're going to want to compare fees, services, plan provisions, costs, all of that to see if it makes some sense to consolidate. And that brings up the point of uh, employees who are no longer with the company who still have assets uh, with the company's uh, 401k plan. Right. And sometimes the employer can lose track of those employees, right? So if I've moved three times in 10 years and I never kept my contact information current with my prior employer, then that means I may not be getting those summary plan descriptions. I may not be getting those fee disclosures and maybe my prior employer is getting return mail. So the employer needs to get those documents to anybody who has assets in the plan, regardless of whether they're actively employed or not. So sometimes we forget to keep that current. And it's important that that employer 
you know, uh, because of Department of Labor rules and regulations, it's important that that employer marry those assets with that prior employee. Sure. And for the participants, it's also important to keep the beneficiary information up to date, correct? Oh, absolutely. You know, we've seen some unintended consequences with not keeping beneficiary information current. And sometimes we forget when there's life-changing events like marriage, divorce, um, birth of a child, um, a death in the family. Sometimes we forget that maybe those beneficiary designations that we, you know, filled out five years ago maybe aren't applicable. Sure. Okay. Shireen, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. Great to see you, Marie.